Election season is right around the corner, and it's about more than just a choice between two names on the ballot. It's about shaping the future of our communities, businesses, and everyday lives. As a small business owner, understanding each candidate's proposed policies can help you gauge how your business might be affected in the years to come. But let's be clear, this isn't just about business. It's about making an informed decision that aligns with all the issues that matters most to you, your family, and your community. So let's break down the policies of both candidates and see how small businesses will be affected. With a new understanding of each candidate's policies, you can be more confident heading to the polls in November with the knowledge you need to make the best choice for your future and your business. Jumping right into it. Our current corporate tax rate is 21%. Trump is looking to keep it and Harris is looking to raise it. If Trump manages to keep the corporate tax rate at 21%, this is a huge advantage for small business owners. Let's say you're running a bakery making $200,000 in profit. Under Trump, you only pay $42,000 in taxes, leaving you with $158,000 to reinvest. Maybe you finally buy that high capacity oven or expand your space to offer more seating. This means you're not just maintaining your business, you're growing it. According to the Tax Foundation, these tax cuts have saved small businesses around 9% on average in effective tax rate. That's a big deal. On the flip side, if Harris gets her way and raises the corporate tax rate to 28%, that same bakery would now pay $56,000 in taxes, leaving you with $144,000. That, that's $14,000 less than what you would have under the Trump's plan. Now, $14,000 might not seem like a lot of money, but it could mean the difference between expanding or hiring that extra staff member. Harris justifies this by saying she wants wealthier corporations to pay their fair share. But yes, this will impact small businesses experiencing growth as well. It's important to point out that Harris tries to offset this tax increase with a substantial boost in startup tax deductions. Instead of the current $5,000 small businesses have as a tax deduction, she's proposing you could deduct up to $50,000 in startup expenses. This means if you're just launching your bakery or any small business, you can write off a bigger portion of your initial cost even before making profit or wait until you actually turn a profit. This can be a game changer in those early years when every dollar counts. To put it into perspective, let's say your bakery eventually makes $200,000 in profit. With Harris' plan, you deduct that $50,000 first, so you're only taxed on $150,000. At the proposed 28% rate, you pay $42,000 in taxes, which is exactly what you pay under the Trump's plan. Essentially, this deduction can help you reach the same level of savings, especially when you're starting out. This upfront help could make a significant difference in keeping more money in your pocket as you build your business. The big takeaway is that Trump's policies allow you to keep more of your earnings as your business grow, which can be great if you're already profitable. Meanwhile, Harris's approach provides more significant support when you're just starting, especially with her enhanced startup deduction. It really comes down to where you believe your business needs the most help, whether it's getting the extra boost in the early stages or maximizing your profit as you expand. Both have their advantages, depending on whether your priority is immediate cash flow or long-term growth and support. So now let's shift gears and talk about healthcare, specifically the Affordable Care Act. Harris plans to expand the Affordable Care Act and, and introduce a public option for healthcare. So if you're running a small tech startup with 10 employees, this could be a game changer. It means you have more affordable options for providing health insurance, which makes it easier to offer attractive benefits to your team. This is crucial because nearly 50% of small business employees rely on their employer for health coverage. By making healthcare more accessible, Harris aims to relieve some of the financial pressure on small business owners. She summed it up perfectly in a speech in New Hampshire saying, no business should have to choose between hiring employees and providing them with healthcare. So if you're trying to keep your talented team members happy, her plan might help you do just that. In contrast, Trump has taken a step to reduce the impact of the Affordable Care Act, which could make health care more expensive for small businesses trying to offer benefits. For example, if you're running a spa and want to provide health insurance for your five employees, the lack of affordable care 
protection might make it much harder to afford quality coverage. According to a survey by the Commonwealth Fund, without the Affordable Care Act subsidies, the average employer could end up paying as much as $6,000 per employee annually for health insurance. So when it comes to health care, the key difference is that Harris wants to make it easier and more affordable for small businesses to offer benefits, while Trump's approach might mean higher costs for you as an employer. Let's discuss employee pay. Harris is a strong supporter of raising the federal minimum wage to $15 an hour. For example, if you own a small cafe with five employees working 30 hours a week, your monthly payroll would jump from $6,000 at $10 an hour to $9,000. That's an additional $3,000 every month. Harris believes this increase would improve employee retention, reducing turnover, and enhance the quality of life for workers. She emphasizes this during a New Hampshire campaign speech stating, no one should work a full-time job and still live in poverty. On the other hand, Trump is against a $15 federal minimum wage. He believes that each state should decide its own minimum wage based on the cost of living, and local economic conditions. For small businesses with tight margins, this might mean lower labor costs and more flexibility in managing payroll. For example, if you own a retail shop in the state where the minimum wage is $10 an hour, you can afford to hire more staff and offer additional hours without the strain of a $15 wage. While Trump's approach offers flexibility, the downside is that it can contribute to income inequality and make it harder for workers to keep up with the rising cost of living, especially in states with lower minimum wage. According to the Economic Policy Institute, around 40% of workers earning less than $15 an hour are over the age of 25. Meaning, this just isn't about teenagers or entry-level workers. Many of these employees rely on these wages to support their families. Many argue that without a standardized federal minimum wage, millions of workers could continue to struggle to make ends meet, which could lead to higher turnover rates decrease employee morale for small businesses in the long run. While Trump's stance might make payroll easier on your budget today, Harris's plan aims to create a more stable and motivated workforce by ensuring that wages keep up with the cost of living. It's a choice between immediate cost savings and long-term workforce sustainability. Okay, so let's move on to regulations. Trump's focus on deregulation is a significant advantage for businesses, especially in industries that tend to be more heavily regulated. Take, for example, a laundromat owner. Under Trump's administration, you'd face fewer environmental regulations, which translate to less paperwork and lower compliance costs. This means you can spend more time growing your business rather than bogged down with the red tape. In fact, the U.S. Chambers of Commerce noted that Trump's administration cut over 600 regulations in 2020 alone, resulting in billions in savings for small businesses. For many business owners, this kind of regulation can be a breath of fresh air, allowing them to operate more efficiently and profitably. On the flip side, Harris advocates for more regulations with the intention of protecting consumers and workers. While this might sound like more hoops to jump through, there's a real business benefit here too. For example, if you're a contractor, Harris's stricter safety protocols means you're less likely to face workplace accidents. This can lead to fewer lawsuits, lower insurance premiums, and safer work environment, which ultimately saves you money and protects your reputation in the long run. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA, publishes several reports. In one report, they state workplace injuries in the U.S. cost over $170 billion annually. That's a loss in productivity, medical expenses, and legal fees. By following more rigorous safety standards, you not only protect your employees, but you also save your business from potential devastating financial setbacks. While Trump's deregulation can free up time and reduce costs in the short term, Harris's approach aims to create a safer, more secure working environment that could save businesses from costly accidents and legal issues in the long run. It's a trade-off between immediate operational ease versus long-term security and stability. It's clear that both candidates have very different visions for small businesses. Trump approach offers lower taxes, fewer regulations, and immediate cost savings, which can be attractive if you're focused on maximizing profits and growth in the short term. On the other hand, Harris aims to provide more support for startups, worker protection, and long-term security, even if that means higher taxes and more regulation upfront. At the end of the day, it's about where your business stands right now and where you see it going in the future. Are you looking for freedom to manage your business with fewer constraints? Or do you want more structured environment that aims to create stable, protected workforce? By the way, understanding these policies help you make an informed decision, not just as a business owner, but as someone who cares about the bigger picture. So 
As you head to the polls this November, keep in mind how these policies will shape your business journey, your community, and the opportunities available for you and others in years to come. Thanks for hearing me out, and I hope you feel more prepared to make a choice that aligns with your vision for the future.